Hey guys, it's Mrs. Charles again, back with the Enchanted Wood, ready for Chapter 3 of the Far Away Tree. I found out something really interesting today, and I think the parents are going to find it quite funny. I found out today from my wife, who teaches English in college, um, that it turns out Enid Blyton is a woman. I had no idea. So Enid is a woman's name. And my wife laughed and laughed and laughed. Who, who thought? Who else thought Enid was a woman or a man? Well, I thought it was a man, but there you go. Right, so I'll read you chapter three, Up the Far Away Tree. And then I have written down some more questions and I've done another picture. <laughs> I love pictures. And today we've got Pusheen. We've got Belle joining us because she fancied joining in. We've got Spider-Man. Oh, and we've got Unicorn. And that's my wife's cuddly toy. And we've got this one. <laughs> Okay, uh, chapter three, Up the Far Away Tree. The children did not tell their father and mother about the happenings in the enchanted wood, for they were so afraid that they might be forbidden to go there. But when they were alone, they talked about nothing else. When do you suppose we could go up the far away tree? Franny kept asking. Oh, let's go, Joe. Joe wanted to go very badly, but he was a little afraid of what might happen, and he knew that he ought to look after his two sisters and see that no harm came to them. Just suppose they all went up the faraway tree and never came back again. <sighs> then he had an idea. Listen, he said, I know what we'll do. We'll climb up the tree and just see what is at the top. We don't need to go there. We can just look. We'll wait until we have a whole day to ourselves. Then we'll go. The girls were so excited. They worked hard in the house, hoping that their mother would say they could have the whole day to themselves. Joe worked hard in the garden too, clearing away all the weeds. Their parents were very pleased. Would you like to go to the nearest town and have a day there? Asked mother at last. No, thank you said Joe at once. We've had enough of towns, mother. What we'd really like is to go and have a whole day picnic in the wood. Very well, said mother. You can go tomorrow. Father is going off for the day to buy some things we need, and I have things to do here in the cottage. So as I'll be close by, you can take your lunch and dinner and go off by yourselves, if it is fine and sunny. How the children hoped the day would be fine. They woke early and jumped out of bed. They pulled their cur curtains open and looked out. The sky was as blue as cornflowers. The sun shone bet between the trees and the shadows lay long and dewy on the grass. The enchanted wood stood dark and mysterious behind their garden. They all had their breakfast. Then mother cut sandwiches and put them in a bag, along with three cakes each. She, she sent Joe to pick some plums from the garden and told Beth to take two bottles of lemonade. Mm, yum, yum. The children were most excited. Father set off to town and the children waved goodbye to him from the gate. Then they tore off indoors to get the bag in which their food had been put. They said goodbye to their mother and slammed the cottage door shut. <gasps> oh, adventures were in the air that morning. Up the faraway tree, Joe, Beth and me, sang Franny loudly. Hush, said Joe. We are not far from the enchanted wood. We don't want anyone to know what we're going to do. They ran down the back garden and out of the little gate at the end. They stood still in the overgrown narrow lane and looked at one another. It was the first big adventure of their lives. What were they going to see? What were they going to do? What do you think, guys? They jumped over the ditch and into the wood. At once, they felt different. Magic was all around them. The bird's song sounded different. The trees once again whispered secretly to one another. Wish, 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 wish. Ooh, said Franny, shivering with delight. 
Come on, said Joe, going down the green path. Let's find the far away tree. They followed him. He went on until he came to the oak tree, under which they had sat before. There were the six toadstools too, on which the elves had had their meeting, though the to toadstools looked rather brown and old now. Which is the way now? said Beth, stopping. None of them knew. They set off down a little path, but they soon stopped, for they came to a strange place where the trees stood so close together they could not go any further. They went back to the oak tree. Let's go this other way, said Beth, so they set off in a different direction. But this time they came to a curious pond whose waters were pale yellow and shone like butter. Beth didn't like the look of the pond at all, and the, the three of them went back once more to the oak tree. This is too bad, said Franny, almost crying. Just when we've got a whole day to ourselves, we can't find a tree. I'll tell you what we'll do, said Joe suddenly. We'll call those elves. Don't you remember how they said they would help us whenever we wanted them? Of course, Franny said. We had to stand under this oak tree and whistle seven times. Go on, Joe, whistle, said Beth. So Joe stood beneath the thick green leaves of the old oak and whistled loudly seven times. I can't whistle. If you can whistle, you can whistle seven times. Ooh, ooh. Was that... <laughs> Let's go. I can't do seven. I'll get confused. They whistled seven times loudly. The children waited. In about half a minute, a rabbit popped its head out of a nearby rabbit hole and stared at them. Who do you want? said the rabbit in a furry sort of voice. The children stared in surprise. They had never heard an animal speak before. The rabbit put his ears up and down and spoke again rather crossly. Are you deaf? What do you want? I said. Um, we want one of the elves, said Joe, finding his tongue at last. The rabbit turned and called down his hole. Mr Whiskers, Mr Whiskers, there's someone wanting you. Then came a voice shouting something in answer. And then one of the six elves squeezed out of the rabbit hole and stared at the children. Sorry to be so long, he said. One of the rabbit's children has the measles, and I was down seeing to it. I don't think rabbits get the measles, said Beth, astonished. They more often get the weasels, said Mr Whiskers. Weasels are even more catching than measles, as far as rabbits are concerned. He grinned as if he had made a huge joke. But as the children had no idea that weasels were savage little animals that caught rabbits, they didn't laugh. We wanted to ask you the way to the faraway tree, said Beth. We've forgotten it. I'll take you, said Mr Whiskers, whose name was a really good one. For his beard reached his toes. Sometimes he trod on it, then jerked his head downwards. Suddenly... Both kept what Beth kept wanting to laugh, but she thought she had better not. She wondered why she di he didn't tie his beard around his waist out of the way of his feet. Mr. Whiskers led the way between the dark trees. At last, he reached the trunk of the enormous faraway tree. Here you are, he said. Are you expecting someone down it today? Well, no said Joe. We rather wanted to go up it by ourselves. Go up it by yourselves? <gasps> said Mr Whiskers in horror. Don't be silly. It's dangerous. You don't know what might be at the top. There's a different place almost every day. Well, we're going, said Joe firmly, and he set his foot against the trunk of the tremendous tree and took hold of a branch above his head. Come on, girls. I self, I shall fetch my brothers and get you down, said Mr Whiskers in a fright, and he scuttled off crying. It's so dangerous, it, it's so dangerous. Do you suppose it is all right to go, asked Beth, 
who was usually the sensible one. Come on, Beth, said Joe impatiently. We're only going to see what's at the top. Don't be a baby. I'm not, said Beth, and she and Franny hauled themselves up beside Joe. It doesn't look very difficult to climb. We'll soon be at the top. But it wasn't as easy as they thought, as you will see. Tomorrow in chapter four, which is the the, the folk in the far away tree. Well, I hope you enjoyed that, children. Um, now I have some questions, a bit like active read. I get them. Right, so let me read you these questions. So, question one. Why was Joe worried about going up the faraway tree at the beginning of the chapter? Number two. The sky was as blue as... Do you know what it was? And do you know what they look like? I had to Google it to find out. What did you think the children would see at the top of the faraway tree? What was the name of the elf they spoke to? Why was this his name? How are the weasels described? Do you know what weasels look like? Could you describe the weasels in a different way? And the drawing challenge today, guys, is can you draw a picture of the elf, if you'd like to? And I'll post my picture in the comments. I had such fun drawing it this morning. It was really good fun. And I think it looks quite good, actually. Okay, guys. Um, tomorrow's Thursday. I'm at school tomorrow. I'm working. Um, so I will probably do the next chapter. Or well, I might film it earlier. I'll, I'll get it on tomorrow. But it won't be till later. All right, guys. Bye. Turn it off.